Hi everybody, let's take a look at carbon cycling. In a previous video, I already talked about the carbon cycle and talked about how it's quite easy to be able to generate it without having to memorize a diagram that looks something like this. And what you can do is just kind of imagine yourself in some kind of position within a carbon cycle and then work outwards from there. For example, if you are this little piggy right here, you have to think about where does the carbon that's in my body actually come from? Well, obviously it comes from eating glucose and other types of carbon rich materials so that would be kind of built up from this area here and then if i'm a little piggy and then i die my body can decompose and get broken down so my carbon is going to go that way at the same time how do i lose carbon dioxide well i breathe it out through cell respiration so that happens up this way as well too remember that plants also are doing cellular respiration in their mitochondria they also have chloroplasts so they can actually take in that carbon dioxide that's been freshly released into the atmosphere back in through photosynthesis. That's why producers or plants or autotrophs uh, can kind of move carbon in many, many different ways. If you set a lot of trees on fire, you can move that carbon dioxide back out this way through combustion, basically, and then carbon dioxide goes back into the air. And then also the bacteria and fungi, these decomposers that are breaking dead plants and dead animals down are also using the carbon that's in there to get their energy and so they're also going to be uh, doing cell respiration I just noticed there's a spelling mistake right here cell respiration putting carbon dioxide back into the air so that's the basic carbon cycle shouldn't be too hard but then I've added these two little guys down here and these are hydrogen carbonate ions because now we have to think a little bit further beyond just our regular understanding of the carbon cycle and think about how the ocean plays a part in all of this as well too. So a few things that we need to remind ourselves before kind of stretching this out into bigger picture. Remember that energy in an ecosystem needs to be constantly replaced. So that's one of our typical arguments that we have when we talk about what's the difference between nutrients and energy in an ecosystem. And the main thing is that energy constantly needs to be resupplied. And so the sun's gonna do that and the plants are gonna help bring that energy in. But nutrients like carbon are cycled. They are recycled and they can move around. Other types of cycles are like the nitrogen cycle, the phosphorus cycle, and those are not cycles that the IB syllabus requires you to know. The main one is the carbon cycle, but the carbon cycle will provide you with plenty of information to help you to be able to explain to somebody uh, the difference between how nutrients and energy are actually used in an ecosystem. So the carbon cycle here is one of our main nutrient cycles. Um, these arrows are kind of varying in their thickness to kind of show relative movements of the amount of carbon basically. So a lot of carbon moves this way by photosynthesis, also cell respiration. Um, relatively speaking, uh, saprotrophic bacteria and fungi are decomposers are moving a lot more, but that's not something you have have to uh, really commit to memory but anyways we call these fluxes fluxes are basically movements of carbon while sinks are the areas where carbon is being stored so any of these kind of stops on this kind of uh, train map if you will or would be considered sinks and the arrows are representing fluxes or movement of the actual carbon so now we add a little bit of water into this whole mix right here and then we get to this point just want to emphasize this one right here autotrophs also known as producers or plants which can be on land or in the water they absorb carbon dioxide from the air that's where this photosynthesis is going right here but if we made a more complicated looking carbon cycle we know that they also absorb that carbon dioxide from the water there are two main sources for that you can actually get that carbon dioxide directly from dissolved carbon dioxide in the water or it's in another form which is kind of represented here these are hydrogen carbonate ions so that's important to know that plants can get their carbon source from either carbon dioxide the dissolved gas or some of that gas will actually dis dissociate into hydrogen carbonate ions so understand that there are two different forms we have dissolved oxygen and then we also have hydrogen carbonate ions that are being used in this process for the uptake of carbon by producers if we take our basic model 
of the carbon cycle over here and we expand on it a little bit in a later video that's following up from these we're going to make this carbon cycle a little bit more complex to actually show hydrogen carbonate ions in there dissolved carbon dioxide as well and one more thing we should draw attention to is methane so you've probably heard of methane before it is a molecule that is small it has a formula of ch4 kind of looks like this it's also flammable it's also part of the gas that's made when you're actually passing gas or if we use more proper english farting and then what happens is that can get lit on fire you don't want to try that if you're really curious then you can find crazy people doing those kinds of things on YouTube, but I didn't point you in that direction. But anyways, we need to consider methane because methane is also part of the carbon cycle. It has carbon right here and it's very important. Quick side note, if you remember doing, what topic would that be? Topic 2.1 or 2.2 where we're talking about the properties of water, we compare H2O to CH4 to see how hydrogen bonds are just so strong and H2O. So a couple different points of reference for uh, methane, but it's something you should be familiar with. Anyways, but in this case, we're talking about methane in the carbon cycle, where this actually fits in. So we've said it needs to be considered as well. It's produced by a type of bacteria called methanogenic archaeans, and they are formed in swamps right here in anaerobic conditions, which is why we don't get it a lot all over the place, why it's not really considered uh, when you're talking about your basic carbon cycle. But the reason why we're probably needing to discuss this a little bit more is because the production of the methane, which actually in the air can get actually turned into carbon dioxide, seems to play a role, an added role in increasing the effect of this greenhouse effect that everyone's talking about and global warming. So we need to understand its kind of role here. So methane is actually made from kind of incomplete decomposition basically so in the absence of oxygen you actually get methane being made instead of carbon dioxide but once it hits the air it eventually gets oxidized mixes with the oxygen and chemical reaction happens and turns into carbon dioxide um, anyways so we need to understand that as a component of the extended carbon cycle which is important you already know what this word means combustion but let's add a few pictures just to show you how scary this looks your car is producing this every time you go and you set things on fire i hope you're not doing that regularly there's a word for that it's called pyromaniac please don't do that not because it's crazy but because you'll be contributing to global warming combustion means burning it's a non-biological thing that's happening but it occurs naturally because lightning sets things on fire but anyways when these trees burn or when we burn fossil fuels this is a picture uh, depicting the industrial revolution um, we had a lot of extra carbon dioxide that humans have released into the atmosphere Alrighty, in the next video, we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail. We'll talk more about what happens with carbon in the water, like limestone. We'll link it more to global warming and actually talk about fossil fuels more specifically and how they kind of get formed and how this kind of weird stuff happens as well, too. Okay, coming up next.